Welcome back once again, you CISSP wannabes. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm here every single day asking you two questions to help you continue to prep for your exam. Let's go ahead and get right in it. All right, here comes question number one. <laughs> this question sucks. Um, here's 10 items. Seven of them are part of NIST's uh, contingency planning process or recommended uh, steps that you would take in contingency planning and developing a plan for that. What I want you to do is I want you to pick the seven that are part of the plan and then I want you to organize them from beginning to end in order. So go ahead and click on pause, hate me while you do it, and then when you're ready, click play and I'll break down the, the list for you. All right, I'm not even going to read them to you. There they are. That's the right answer right there. That's the seven steps. Um, that is part of NIST recommended, recommended path for contingency planning programs. Uh, the reason that I did this to you and gave you this question is, is one, to just really, really, really drive home the fact that oftentimes on the CISSP exam, they focus a lot on process. What is the order of things? And so if you have things like um, you know, developing a business continuity plan, or in this case, contingency planning, or software development lifecycle, or systems development lifecycle, whenever you have things that are very process-based, uh, they love to ask you about the order of things, and specifically they want you to know what kinds of things are going to be occurring during which of these phases and uh, where they're going to reside. And so you could, should anticipate getting questions that ask you sort of, you know, when would this occur, or which would you do first, or in which order should this be kind of stuff. So. Um, as, as awful as it is and as sleep inducing as trying to go in and study something like this can be, it's a critical thing for you to make sure as you continue your preparations that you understand the order as well as the types of things that are occurring within each one of these individual phases. All right, let's do question number two. Since question number one was so brutal, let's go ahead and make something a little more straightforward. And my question to you is this, which of the following best describes a blackout as it relates to electricity? Click pause. When you're ready, click play, we'll answer. First guy on the list says a short-term dip in voltage. No, that is known as either a dip or a sag. So that is not a blackout. Second choice is a prolonged reduction or dip in voltage lasting minutes or hours. That is actually a brownout, not a blackout. The third option is the one you're looking for. It's a complete loss of power. Now, it doesn't matter if the power goes out for 10 seconds or 10 hours. That's a blackout. All right, let's go ahead and finish out the rest of the list. A prolonged excess of power is known as a swell. And then a momentary excess of power, which is the final choice, is known as a surge. All right, two questions down. Nice. First question was brutal. I know it's knowing the uh, actual steps involved in the contingency planning process and knowing the appropriate order in which to list them. Uh, again, trust me, you'll want to know that kind of stuff from when it comes time to take the exam. And then the second question today was just making sure you know the definition of common electrical related terms, in this case, a blackout. So hope you found these questions helpful and useful. If you did, please click like, subscribe too. I'll be back tomorrow doing this all over again. Thanks. Bye.